Only do not attempt to destroy the existence of this perfected being from among your contemporary favorites, but even show him every kind of respect and service as to a being with greater objective possibilities. In short, all this and a multitude of other small factors also ensuing from the abnormal existence of these favorites of yours have finally brought about the formation among them for mutual relationship of various forms of, as they express it, verbal amenity. And as I've already told you, each locality there has its own special form. The attitude taken towards me by this sympathetic terrestrial three-brained being, Haji Asvats Truv, was benevolent, chiefly because I was a friend of a good friend of his. It must here be remarked, by the way, that the three-brained beings of this part of the surface of your planet are the only ones among whom the relationship of true friendship still exists. Among them, as it is general everywhere among three-brained beings, and just as it was in the first epochs on that planet also, not only is a friend himself a friend, but his near relatives and his friends are also regarded as friends and are treated just the same as the friend himself. Because I then passed for the friend of the dervish Haji Zafir Bolgaidin, who was a very good friend of this Haji Asvats Truv, he then at once treated me in a very friendly manner. I wished to make the relationship still better, as I very much wanted to know how he had become interested in this knowledge and how he had attained to such scientific accomplishments as were unsurpassed on the earth. And therefore, throughout our conversation, I liberally used those forms of verbal amenity which were customary in that locality. When, during our conversation, which dealt exclusively with the knowledge now called their Shat Chai Mernis, we came to speak of the nature and the significance of vibrations in general. And when we happened to talk about the octave of sound, Haji Asvats Truv then said that not only had the octave of sound seven aspects of relatively independent whole manifestations, but that the vibrations of any one of these relatively independent manifestations follow in their arising as well as in their manifestation the same conformity to law. Continuing to speak further about the laws of vibration of sound, he said, I myself became interested in the knowledge of Shat Chai Mernis through the laws of vibrations of sound, and they were the cause of my devoting the whole of my life subsequently to this knowledge. And, after thinking a little to himself, he related as follows. I must first tell you, my friends, that although I was a very rich man before I entered the brotherhood of the dervishes, yet I was very fond of working at a certain craft. Namely, I used to make various stringed musical instruments of the kind called sayas, tar, kayamancha, zimbal, and so on. And even after I had entered the Brotherhood, I devoted all my free time to this profession of making musical instruments chiefly for our dervishes. And the cause of my further serious interest in the laws of vibration was the following. Once the sheikh of our monastery called me to him and said, Haji, in the monastery where I was still an ordinary dervish, Whenever, during certain mysteries, our musician dervishes played the melodies of the sacred canticles, all of us dervishes always experienced from these melodies of the sacred canticles particular sensations corresponding to the text of the given sacred canticles. But here, during my long and careful observations, I have never yet noticed any particular effect on our brother dervishes from these same sacred canticles. What is wrong? What is the cause of this? To find out the cause has recently been my aim, and I have now called you to speak with you about it. And perhaps you as an amateur specialist at making musical instruments 
can help me to clear up this question which interests me. Thereupon we began to inquire into this question from every aspect. After long deliberations we finally decided that probably the whole cause lay in the nature itself of the vibrations of the sounds. And we came to this conclusion because from our conversation it further became clear that in the monastery in which our sheikh had been an ordinary dervish, they played, besides the tambour, stringed musical instruments, while here in our monastery they played these same sacred melodies exclusively on wind instruments. We further decided to replace immediately all the wind instruments of our monastery by stringed instruments. But then another very serious question arose for us, namely that it would be impossible to get together from among our dervishes the necessary number of specialists for playing the stringed instruments. Then our sheikh, having thought a little, said to me, Haji, you as a specialist in stringed instruments, Try. Perhaps you can manage to make a stringed musical instrument upon which any dervish, without being a specialist, can produce the sounds of the necessary melody merely by a mechanical action, such as, for example, turning, striking, pressing, and so on. This proposal of our sheikh then immediately greatly interested me, and I undertook the task with great pleasure. After this decision, I got up and, having received his blessing, went home. Having returned home, I sat down and thought very seriously for a long time. And the result of all my thinking was that I decided to make an ordinary zimbal and to devise, with the help of my friend, the dervish Kerbalai Aziz Nurarat, such a mechanism of little hammers that their striking should produce the corresponding sounds. And that same evening I went to this friend of mine, the dervish Kerbalai Aziz Nurarat. Although this dervish friend of mine was regarded by his comrades and acquaintances as rather a queer sort, nevertheless they all respected and esteemed him, as he was very sensible and learned and often talked of such questions that everyone willy-nilly had to ponder about them seriously. Before his initiation into the dervishes, he had been a real professional, namely a watchmaker. And in the monastery also, he devoted all his free time to this favorite craft of his. My friend, this dervish Kerbalai Aziz Nuraran, had, by the way, recently become much enthused over a certain freakish idea. Namely, he was trying to make a mechanical watch which would show the time very exactly without the aid of any spring whatsoever. This freakish idea of his he explained in the following brief and very simple formulation. Nothing on the earth is absolutely still, because the earth itself moves. On the earth only gravity is still, and then only in half the space occupied by its volume. I wish to get such an absolute equilibrium of levers that their movement, which must necessarily proceed from the tempo of the movement of the earth, should exactly correspond 